for, um, for letting me a part of, be a part of tonight, from the workshop to the amazing readings that have already happened. It's such an honor to be here. Um, I'm still learning how to read from this new book called The Real Horse. <clears throat> so I'm going to read two short poems and then one longer poem. The, the whole book is addressed to my daughter named Gianna, who's uh, now seven years old. Um, I guess I'll read the first two poems because they kind of set up some of the other stuff. Um, my own background, I'm born from a Syrian mother and a Peruvian father. And I was, the reason I ended up in this country is I was preemptively kidnapped uh, by my mother to get away from domestic violence. So this, this first poem speaks to some of that history. Um, and again, it's addressed to my daughter. So the you is, is her, with the idea that she'll pick up this book whenever she's interested and ready, or if she might ever be interested in writing. Ellington in this poem is Duke Ellington, the composer of jazz artist. Or we could go mirrored upon the face of the waters that bear loose slide surfboards shaped for this break. Or upon the plains where winds arrange those who aspire to a safe room. Those who fall off the beat, those who fall off the sad feeling in the story of Ellington arranging a confidence from your ear like believe we were good having gone this far from Peru from my dad beating her into foreign reaches my mother with her sisters cleared refugees from the country of women cruising with our bad taste inside we were illegal on paper then say we were a patriated glory born faster upon the face of the waters, checking our miracles against the stories of a usable past, going off in drunk songs, in right-to-work uniforms, exponentially articulated, going all around, even in the English sound of the names they brought on us, dick-nosed, bearded swell buckets we were what shouldn't matter to you now already gone the lantana generating at your feet so proud rightly of your chaos of your trumpets chambered in carports gilding the day's region of objects but will you come to say for yourself as some say as a sign and claim to getting over, in an echoing true name, something like I am an American artist. Um, whenever white poets in the last three years learned I was working on this book, Many of them would lean in and ask, are you writing about Syria? And it's just a kind of perverse curiosity and jealousy and this idea that one is going to um, write about a topical issue because one happens to have a tangential relationship to it in order to capitalize on some economy of value that white poets feel they're constantly being excluded from, right? So. I, my answer was always, I can only write from where I'm situated, which is as an immigrant and as a child of different ethnicities. That's one piece of background for this little poem. The other is that in the New Testament, if you happen to, to read the, the Gospels, Jesus is always asking, he's always doing things. <laughs> he's doing these things. <laughs> But then he asks, well, what do people say about me? After he does the things, right? He's very curious about how his fame or his reputation is spreading amongst people 
One, he's scared. He doesn't want to be persecuted by the state, by Romans. And two, he wants to win followers, right? So that's in this poem in the background. And the etymology of the name Mary, as in like the Virgin Mary, part of it means of the sea. Lamp in the night could be a name for each Syrian hill poised along my mother's line, now burning. And my landed greed's love wishes you a right to rest in any country's dust, no matter the habits or confusions or what jellyfish washed ashore might think of you. Animal? Oyster? Row? Beef? Wrapped in a warm feeling, fearing you, the prophet in his glory needed to know what people said about him outside still water and dough piss and reed straws sucking the lagoon up inside themselves to share in life. A people says, sprinkle the unused words to the bottom. A people says, we are as good as each feather tip of brush grass reaching into the wind. This coast is exploding. All over the waves, leaves are hungry. I can tell you about it. I'm trying to not forget the lyric part, the noise you'll welcome as a twin, the faster cymbals ringing all down the hill. The ocean swills in from the south, one wave by the arch rock, the next on its shoulder, and so on to the point. The point lifts them up. There are holy women somewhere alive with your techne, with your name. Mary meant of the sea, even if pictures don't hold anyone still. I'm going to close with this, this poem. The reason I read the last one is mentioned as a holy woman. And this poem makes reference to a handful of women. Sojourner Truth, to begin with, African American ab abolitionist and feminist. Um, the poet Harmony Holiday, who's an amazing poet, daughter of a music composer. The poet Susan Briante, the poet um, Anne Boyer, and lastly the poet Alice Notley. The James in the that I reference is a poet named James Dickey who wrote a really weird poem called The Eye Beaters about visiting blind kids who would punch their eyeballs to see flashes of light. In her narrative, Sojourner Truth alludes to sexual assault that she experienced at the hands of a white woman, either Sally or Elizabeth Dumont. Sexual assault that she, that she experienced when she was a slave in a household in New York State. A retablo is a style of Mexican folk art often painted on pieces of tin where a scene of conflict is depicted and a little angel sometimes reaches in to intervene and then there's a moral saying at the bottom. So there's a reference to that. Um, and the only other thing I'll say, there's a, a line from a, a really horrific cartoon from the Mexican-American War. And the only other thing I'll say is I'm sorry, because it's a longer poem. It's the last thing I'll read. And it's written in such a way where the lines kind of slosh back and forth like waves. So if it just feels like it's flowing past you, that's fine. It's my fault, not your fault. <laughs> And 
It's called a daughter that she may touch the deployments. You know, deployments here at Davis Mountain Air Force Base, we have a bunch of planes. It's part of the Air Combat Command, and the base maintains these planes ready for deployment. So thinking about what it means to be in a male body as a father, to create a female body as a daughter that has certain privileges and certain vulnerabilities in the way that she's raised and the way that she's gendered. A daughter that she may touch the deployments. You play at slapping us hard enough to get in trouble. I don't know what I speak this into at any of your ages. Some men in particular will think to fuck you. Already do so unaccountable, so unreasonable, and what is usually called so unnatural is how Sojourner had to allow, as an exceptional rule, what was given to her white woman owner whom you could have been. I mean, we gave you a body and didn't change everything. Like the general shrugged evil of it so true and impossible to touch that Harmony wrote to her dad about after he died makes me think to wield me and my types down onto my value if that